Uh, hello everyone. Welcome to Banjo Kazooie in uh, Japanese. This is part one. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through the game and I'm going to discuss the vocab and grammar. I'm going to skip the intro. Some people start their let's plays by watching the whole intro and I'm not going to do that. Um, but I am going to pause here and go over this. Um, so this is Banjo to Kazooie. Uh, obviously just the characters' names. No uh, Dai Bo Ken. Um, and yeah, basically we have like great, in this case read as Dai or, or well, it's kind of great or big, large. Um, uh, and then Bo Ken, which basically just means an adventure. Uh, this one is like okasu, which means like to face or to, um, uh, let's have a look, hold on, to brave, to risk, to face. Um, and then uh, this one is ken, which is in the word kiken, meaning dangerous. So I suppose it's like their great facing of danger or their great braving of, of, of risk. Um and maybe that's the the way that it means uh, grand adventure. Excuse me. Um, hold on. Let me just have a check of this one. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really much more to say, I don't think. Um, but yeah, all of the text in this game, in these videos, will be written in a text document. I think I'm going to put it as it is, because there's no kanji. Or, well, there's very little here anyway. Um, and I will put kanji with it as well in the text document. Um, I also have a, a Patreon page if you want to, if this helps you and you want to contribute, uh, you can. Um, or maybe I'll put like a link to my email as well if you want to, um, if you want some lessons. I do teach Japanese as well, so if you want to. Hit me up, as they say. Um, right, anyway, let's go over this text here. Uh, it's going to keep scrolling, so I have to... Okay, I have to time it well. So here we have... Uh, 3D stick. Which is the analogue stick. Um, they, called, they called it, at least, the 3D stick. Um, during the N64 era. And then we have de, which is a particle. Which kind of means, like, via the 3D stick, or using the 3D stick, or by means of the 3D stick, or it can also mean, like, due to, due to the 3D stick, but that doesn't really work in this, in this context, so it's kind of via the 3D stick. Fairu wo erande kudasai, which is, um, obviously, file, that's just the English word, but written in katakana, fairu, and then the object marker um which you should consider as being attached to the word before it same with this you should consider particles to be attached to the words before them um but yeah it gives you a lot of uh, uh a lot of information about what's acting as what in the sentence that's why particles exist um so fairu wo so this marks this as being the object to which the verb is done. And at the end here we have erande kudasai, which is basically the verb erabu, which means to choose or to select, um, changed into the te form, erande. Uh, and that goes for like every verb that ends in bu is going to conjugate to the te form in this way. For example, uh, erabu becomes erande. A so bu becomes a son de. So luckily for us, the um, kind of conjugation rules in Japanese are crazy consistent. So that's that's good for us. And then kudasai at the end, which basically just makes it polite. So it's just like saying, you know, it's kind of, you could maybe see it as meaning please, please choose a file using the 3D stick. But yeah. And then here we have a botan, and then a colon, for some reason. But yeah, 
a botan, which for some reason they say button like botan. I don't know why, because um, they could say batan or baton, <laughs> but they went with botan for some reason. So a botan, the a button, gamer kaishi. Gamer is game, and kai shi. I think kai is like the kanji for open, and shi is the kanji for to start. So it's like to to open start, to open and start, to to open the game, to start the game, kind of thing. And then we have Z do botan, which I do think is pronounced Z in Japanese, which is convenient for me because I say it like Z anyway. But yeah, Z do botan. So the Z button, fairu wo kesu. And kesu is um, erase, erase the game. That's, that's a verb. Um, yeah, just erase, sorry, erase the file, delete the file. And then for some reason I've got a completely complete file. I I, I, I didn't do that. Um, but yeah. So you got time, which is time. <laughs> Eight hours. Jigsaw, which is uh, jigsaw, um, uh, I guess, 100 jiggies. And then on put, which is notes. On meaning sound. And put is like, usually this one is pronounced just hu on hu, but because it's because it follows a n sound, it becomes pu on pu. But this hu usually just means like markings. So I think it's like sound marks, you know, sound marks, sound symbols, and therefore like notes. Uh, uh, so notation, music notation is is called on pu. Um, uh, sound notes, sound markings, sound symbols. Uh, yeah, anyway, we have 900 of those. So, need to get rid of those. How do I... Oh! 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 Okay, I don't want it to scroll. Okay, so it says, Honto desu ka? Uh, and honto just basically means, um, you know, really? And then desu ka? Uh, desu is basically just... Uh, a polite declarative <laughs> so uh, uh, it's it's hard to explain um, um it's hard to explain isn't it what's a declarative honto deska um uh, it's hard to translate i suppose it's like really is it Kind of really, really is it is kind of the best uh, way to translate. I suppose I don't know. Um, cut at the end is just like a question marker, um, so it just kind of makes things into questions. Like you could say "honto des," which would mean uh, uh, "really it is," "really it is so," but then "honto des ka" is "really it is." Like it makes it into a question, and that's kind of that's kind of all all it does. Then we have a, which refers to the button, saying jiko, uh, jitsu, as it's usually read, means like um, reality, basically. And ko, I suppose, means to to action something, I guess to Chico. yeah to action something it's the kanji for to go so i suppose it's just to sort of to activate something maybe to activate so it's like to to re to activate in reality to actuate so it mind means yeah but to to actually do something so jiko means um yeah, perform the action, I guess, in reality. And then B, this just says kyanseru, which is English, cancel. So there you go. Uh, yes, please. We've got the same message again. All of this, okay. And now it just says new file, which is obviously new file. And we're going to start the new file. <clears throat> it's kind of disappointing how much I'm going to have to pause the game, but... 
we'll deal with it. Oh gosh, okay. Oh no, we got this grammar straight away. Okay, so nabe is the sort of the pot. Uh, yeah, nabe is like, yeah, pots basically, saucepans, pots you cook with, that sort of thing, I believe. Um, and then we've got no, which is a particle which attaches, it attaches nouns together, basically. So nabe no dingu potto yo. Uh, and this yo at the end kind of is just used at the end of um, people's names when you're sort of addressing them. It, it can sort of be like, it can sort of be like a, just a way to get people's attention, I suppose. Um, but yeah, this just kind of addresses the nabe ding pot <laughs> or the cauldron ding pot or... I think a better translation really is Ding Pot the Cauldron. Um, or whatever whatever he is. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's no basically just links nouns together. In this case, that's what it is doing. But sometimes it can show possession. So it could be the Ding Pot belongs to the Cauldron. But that's not what's happening here. It's just linking nouns together. But sometimes it does show possession. Um, and then she's saying Ichiban kide na no wa. Um, Ichiban just means like, I suppose ban just makes it kind of ordinal. So number one, basically. Who's, who's the number one? Kind of. In fact, no, I take that back. It just says number one. Number one. Kirei and Kirei means basically uh, beautiful, I suppose, uh, prettiest, um, kind of attractive. Maybe it can also mean. I think it can also mean like clean. In a way, so I suppose it, you know, for something to be clean, it kind of means that it's it's <clears throat> pleasant to look at. I guess, so I guess that's what kide can also mean, but she means it in the sense of, you know, um, pretty, beautiful. So ichi, <laughs> Ichiban kide nano wa. And this nano wa, basically it needs a, a bit more information after it to make it complete. All she's saying so far is the number one, the number one beautiful... And then there's that sort of end. It's sort of done. It's sort of ended. She needs she needs like a question to go with it, or a statement to go with it. Um, but this happens quite a lot. You'll get like one part of the sentence separated with a no, or rather a no wa, uh, and then sort of more essential information will come after it and they kind of depend on each other to make a full sentence but yeah so she's saying the number one most beautiful dare ja uh, and and there, there it's ended dare is the question word for who so she's saying the number one most pretty is who she's asking the cauldron i don't know i, I don't know why <laughs> um you can ignore these these little things they just draw out the pronunciation so it doesn't change the meaning here she's just saying it in a long slow kind of way just for just for effect um ichiban kire na no wa dare ja um and then ja you can ignore it to be honest it doesn't really mean anything um you can ignore that, yeah. Oh, gross. What's going on? Someone's whistling. Okay. Um, sore wa mochiron. Um, so sore wa sore means that basically the thing you are talking about, or it can also be about physical things. It can be like that thing near you, but in this case, she just asked us a question, so he's saying that the answer to that. 
uh, Mulchidon means, of course, um, basically, we might see Mulchidon again, so I'll, I might go into that a bit deeper later, but it basically means that, of course, Anata, and Anata means you, uh, Guran Chiruda Sama De. And I wonder if he's going to say S at the end, Des, maybe. Um, but Goran Chiruda is her name, Grantilda. And then Summer is just a a title for people that deserve um, respect. You often say it to customers or clients or, um, yeah, people in customer service will say Summer to customers and, and clients. Um, oh, good, he did. He said Des. Okay, good. Anata Guranchiruda Sama Des. So uh, that, of course, you, Gruntilda Sama. Uh, yeah. Huh, what is going on here? Tohoho. I don't know what Tohoho is, actually. Is he laughing? Tohoho? Is that a laughing noise? And then Mata Kayo. Uh, and I think Mata Kayo is. He's sort of saying it to himself, like. I, I feel like it's kind of well mata means again and kayo i think yo in this case can express just strength it just adds strength to what was said and the ka makes it into a question so it's kind of like if you translate it it's kind of like you're saying um are you really asking me that again um but yeah, it's like all of that information isn't really contained in that. He's just kind of saying again is a literal translation, but that obviously doesn't really express the <laughs> what he means by it. He's, but yeah, what he means is, are you really are you seriously asking me that again? This is, this is getting ridiculous kind of vibe. Gross. Ooh, okay. So she's saying Yoroshi, and Yoroshi means um, kind of to be acceptable, to be fine, to be good, to be uh, great, to be like happy with something, I, I suppose. Um, and this is an E adjective. So there are lots of adjectives that end in E. Amusingly, Kirei is not one of them, <laughs> even though it ends in an E. It's a na adjective, which is the other type of adjective. You have e adjectives and you have na adjectives. Um, but we, we, I'm sure we'll see plenty of those. So yeah. Watashi wa kirei and watashi. Watashi is I. So I, uh, kirei and wa here is a topic uh, marker. Um, basically... Uh, Basically, she's just bringing up the topic of herself and then saying information about it. Um, it's very complicated and tough to get the hang of, I think. But yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. So she just said, I am, you know, I am uh, beautiful. I am pretty. Whatever. <laughs> okay. And now he's saying, Otto konna kirei na kouka. So, as I said before, this is a na adjective. So, kirei na ko. Ko is like a... It can mean like child. Um, it can mean like... It's, it's often used to mean like a young woman as well. Um, so, I think that's the meaning here is like young lady. Uh so ko yeah just young lady and because we are saying attaching an adjective sorry we're attaching an adjective to the noun we have to use na because it's a na adjective so you have to say kirei na ko you can't just say kirei ko that doesn't that doesn't work you have to say kirei na ko um and kon na is um, well, I suppose we need to start with Kono. Kono means this, uh, and you'd need like a you'd need like a noun with it. So Kono Hon would be like this book. Um, 
Konna means sort of to this extent, this much of a, this much of a beautiful young lady. Um, yeah. Yeah, this much or this way. Yeah. <laughs> this much of a beautiful young lady. Ga. And then ga is, what is ga? The subject marker. Um, basically, well, sometimes ga is preferred over wa. In this case, you have to say ga. Because you're bringing up the topic. You're bringing up the topic. You're, you're stating the existence of something for the first time. So you, he can't use wa here. Because uh, we haven't established that there is this topic to talk about, I suppose. So he, he has to go with ga. And then there's also, there's no real verb at the end. Um, you'd feel like at the end there'd be a verb like, um, such a beautiful young lady is, exists, lives, but he, he hasn't. He's just sort of omitted that information. And that's fine to do. That's fine to do in Japanese. Um, that happens a lot, in fact. And otto is just, let's say, an uh-oh. It's, it's almost the same sound, even. It's sort of a bit of a sudden kind of realisation of something maybe negative or something threatening or something like that, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's all that is. It's just the noise. She's getting angry. Okay. <laughs> nan -jato. Uh Nan is basically um, nani, which means what. Uh, this whole thing as a whole is like nan jato. To is a quote particle. Um, so it's sort of saying like the quote. Mm, nanjato. How do you translate that? Nanjato. Um, it's basically translated to what did you say? What did you just say? And I suppose the toe is required in that case because it's like you're requesting a, a kind of a verbatim response of what he just said. Um, nanjato. Um, I don't really know what Jazz doing, to be honest. It might just be a shortening down. Oh, do you know what? I think I think it's actually I think it's just a, a, a slightly mispronounced kind of nan da. And da is the the declarative, so nan da to. So it's nan da is kind of like what it is, and then to is like the quote. So what it is. And then, you know, quoting, um, uh, <laughs> did you say? Like, it's it's a pretty complicated little sentence, actually. Anyway, yeah, basically just saying, what what are you saying? What did you just say? And then, washi yori kirei na ko nado. And there'll be more information when I get onto the next uh, text box, but I need to cover this first. So, washi is uh, a first person pronoun. I don't know why she didn't say watashi this time, but she wants to say washi, which is kind of used by older people. Um, I think it's kind of, it was maybe favourable in older Japanese in the past. Um, so I don't know if it caught on because of that, or, or if people are self-aware enough to know that they're old and therefore start saying washi because they're old. Um, I don't know if it's gone out of fashion or if it's a self, you know, self-awareness kind of thing. But yeah, uh, washi yori is basically like than. It's kind of like than, but it doesn't really like we would say more than in English. But you kind of don't have to use more or less than in Japanese. You just say than. Um so washi yori, so than I, kirei na ko, so, you know, beautiful young lady. And then nado is like etc, basically. 
so um a, a kind of a more beautiful young lady than i and and etc and things such as you know uh young ladies more beautiful than me um she's probably gonna say something like do not exist or something yeah okay oru wake nai oh gosh man this grammar right off the bat with this game um oru is an old japanese way kind of of saying iru which means to exist of living beings um uh, living beings that can move around, basically. You, you, you'd say aru for plants and things that can't move, and iru for humans, animals, birds, you know, things that can move around. And oru is just an old kind of version of that. I think it's still kind of used in polite speech quite a lot, but yeah. So oru wake nai. Um, and this kind of means... Nai is like to not exist. It's the negative of aru. So to not be, to not exist. And it means that like there does not exist. Wake is like a, a reasonable conclusion, I suppose. Um, so there does not exist a reason or a conclusion or, 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 or a logical conclusion that there exists... <laughs> Um, uh, people such as, I suppose, or things like um, uh, a more than me beautiful young lady. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, clunky when you translate it, but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, oru wakenai. So it's like there, there's no way, basically, this kind of wakenai essentially translates as there's no way so there is no way that there exists uh, someone more beautiful than me is 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 a better translation probably um yeah and and as you can might be able to see from japanese what you can do is you can just take a whole statement and whack it before like a noun and it now will just all modify that entire noun um so a uh a reason of their existing, a beautiful young lady than me, <laughs> does not exist. <laughs> Which is crazy uh, to, you know, reorder and everything. But yeah, um, I'm sure we'll see plenty of this kind of modifying nouns and stuff. Okay. Chuti to you... Oh, sorry. Wakakute kawaii ko. This. Now we've got two e adjectives here, which we'll go over. So chu ti. This is inside their sort of Japanese uh, speech marks, making it kind of a you know a quote, um, I guess. And then to you. You is the verb for um, say, and to as we've said before is the quoting particle. So it's kind of quoting her name. And then you can mean the verb to say. Or, as it's used here, it can essentially just mean um, to be called. Tutti. Um, and so you've got like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Tutti say. <laughs> Tutti say. Uh, and then wakai, as it would normally be, wakai, it means young. Um, but because we have another like adjective afterwards, we need to change this so that it's like a um, a conjunction form, conjunction for form of the, of the e adjective. And so to do that, instead of wakai, it becomes wakakute, and then we have kawaii, which is an e adjective. And with e adjectives, we don't need anything to attach it to nouns. So it just goes straight from kawaii to ko and then des. That kind of declarative. It's um, it's kind of a polite declarative. It's a little bit different. But anyway, we'll just think of it like that for now. Um, so yeah, uh, 
she's uh, uh, and, and again i suppose this is all modifying this young lady noun here cool. so uh, a tutti like is said or tutti called young cute young lady is uh, which is uh, again awkward to translate <clears throat> Okay, she's gone back with this wake thing here, so. Baka itenjanayo. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Baka, as I'm sure you know, means like idiot, um, a fool, moron. Um, and I think sh she's saying, I don't. <clears throat> I don't really know why why this works the way it does, but it's like baka you baka it iteru. Um, I guess it means like don't say stupid things, um, or don't be in the state of saying stupid things. This is kind of like present continuous. This this is <laughs> so present continuous, right? Normally the <clears throat> the verb is you, uh, meaning to say. You make it te form, so it becomes ite in this case. All verbs that end in u will be will do the same. So ite au meaning to meet would be atte, um, etc. But yeah, <clears throat> oh, there's too much going on here. Really, this is too early in the in the series to 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 see this word but we'll, we'll have to go through it so you would say make it te form ite and then iru makes it into a like present continuous form iru means to be to exist and if you put that with the te form of a verb ite iru it means sort of present continuous the action is happening now um <clears throat> or at least that's one of that one of the things it can mean um however in japanese a lot of the ru characters uh can change into un sounds um because i don't know why i guess they're kind of similar if you think of like wakaranai wakaranai <clears throat> means to not understand to not be clear but that always kind of gets shortened down in rather than wakaranai it becomes wakanai <clears throat> so there is this phenomenon in japanese of changing uh rus r sounding hiragana into ns and so that's what's going on here uh iten janayo this would not normally be written with a chi with a dakuten but i think they want to make her sound a bit rougher than normal people would say so they've opted to go with a chi with a dakuten rather than a shi with a dakuten uh either way they're both read as janai but i guess this might just have a slightly more rough pronunciation um and what's also really weird about this is that it looks like she's saying it looks like she's saying you are not saying idiotic things but actually <laughs> annoyingly in this case she's saying do not she's saying don't say such stupid things uh, don't say stupid things um but to tell someone not to do something you don't usually just say janai you would say baka iwanaide or baka yuna um but sometimes this can mean to not do like don't it can it can mean don't do that um, and that's what it means in this case although having said that about the grammar i think this is quite common as its own kind of phrase. Baka iten janai. Um, yeah, I think it can. It's kind of just become its own phrase that means. Uh, uh, I don't say, don't 
talk like such a moron, basically. And then son na ko ga oru wake nai. So we've got the same sort of thing again. Everything's modifying wake. Everything before wake, sorry, is modifying wake. So such a, this is like konna, which we saw before, but it's sonna. So it's talking about what he said, what he said about something. It's like that, that kind of young lady. Um, existing logical conclusion is not. So <laughs> as I translated it before, it's kind of more like it cannot be or there's 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 no way that such a young lady exists. Uh, yeah, that's enough. We spent plenty of time on this whole intro cutscene. <laughs> and he's going, ee which means no, essentially. He's like, ee no chuti ga ichiban desu. Uh, tuti is number one. And this is a good, this is a good difference here. This is ga rather than wa, uh, because he is specifying, <coughs> excuse me, he's specifying who is number one. So it just kind of works that it when it's kind of like who is who, who's doing what, it's kind of this gut functions in that way. It functions to say that Tuti is number one. Um, can't use wa here because I think maybe wa maybe wa doesn't really rule out the possibility of her being number one as well as much uh, I'm not sure but I, I, hey, let's give an example right if she said like watashi wa guranchirudi uh, sorry guranchiruda that's like I you know the topic of me i am gruntilda but if she said ga it would be i am gruntilda i am the one that is called gruntilda and that's kind of what ga sometimes has the function of doing um so yeah she's saying he's saying tuti is number one tuti is the one who is number one um so that's <clears throat> a good illustration of how ga can work Okay, and then she's saying Hoki yo, and Hoki is just the 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 word for broom. Um, so yeah, Hoki yo, and we've got this kind of yo again, just sort of addressing the broom. I, I assume sort of quite uh, quite strongly, considering it's got yo on the end. And then Chekku ni iku yo. Uh, Chekku is the is the word for check. Gonna go go to check is basically what she's saying. Check gu ni. And this is like a uh, a particle. Ni is a particle as well. Check gu ni iku yo. So go kind of for the sake of checking. But usually ni is just a preposition. It's just the preposition they use for like everything. Like Monday ni is on Monday. The 25th ni would be on the 25th. September ni is in September. We have different prepositions in English, but they kind of just don't in Japanese, which is lucky for us. They just say ni like all the time. Excuse me. But in this case, it's it's functioning differently, and it's kind of like, you know, go to check. Go for the sake of checking. And then end it with yo. And you know, I might actually end it there, because we're already 40 minutes in, which is ridiculous um um should i though i think i should because there's going to be loads more text out of bottles and everything isn't there so yeah let's leave it there bit of a bit of a rubbish screen to leave it on but never mind as i said there's like um, text document links in the description um if you want to sort of uh you know use it to look words up and things like that um um yeah Patreon exists. Uh, uh, contribute if you want. I can teach you if you like. Hit me up. Don't know. Don't if you don't want to. Um, and yeah, that's the end of part one. So, thanks for watching. Hope it's been worth it. And I'll see you next time.